Today's monster in human clothing is the American serial killer David Richard Berkowitz, a.k.a. the 44 caliber killer, but the whole world knew him as the son of Sam. The murderer of six, and not to mention a well-renowned dog whisperer. Welcome to Straight Arrow, a channel where we'll explore the very worst people that mankind, or womankind for that matter, has to offer. On today's menu is a man, if you can actually call him that, named David Richard Berkowitz, he claimed six victims in New York, but the question remains, did he do it as a lone wolf, or as a member of a pack? In this case, Evil was born on the 1st of June, 1953, in Brooklyn, New York. He was born Richard David Falco, to Betty Broder, and Joseph Kleinman. Okay, this may get a bit confusing, so grab a coffee, or a tea, splash some water in your face, and focus. She was married to a dude named Tony Falco, whom she had a daughter with. Then, he took off. However, the two never divorced. Then she hooked up with, and married Joseph Kleinman. Not sure how she was able to marry Joseph, when she was still married to Tony. Anyway, she then told Tony that she had a bun in the oven. And his reaction? Was he overjoyed? Did he drop to his knees to give thanks to whatever god he worshipped? Well, not exactly, in fact, he told her to get rid of it. But she decided to have the baby, and listed Tony as young Richard's father. Shortly after his birth he was adopted by Nathan and Pearl Berkowitz, who then changed his name to the name we all know. David Richard Berkowitz As a kid, well, he had a bit of a troubled life, he was a really smart kid, but he wasn't terribly interested in learning and school. That's not to say that he didn't have his own hobbies. Like stealing shit and being a bit of a pyro. It's not like he didn't have skills, I mean, he was an awesome baseball player. But he was also known as the neighborhood bully. In 1971, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and got out in 1974. He was lucky enough to not go to Nam, instead, he did his tour in the U.S. and South Korea. He worked at quite a few jobs in his life including as a security guard and mailman. The first time he attacked women was, according to Berkowitz, was a pair of women in 1975, on December 24th. He claimed that he attacked both with a knife. One was never identified. But the other one was, it's believed, was Michelle Foreman. She went to the hospital to have her wounds attended to. Berkowitz was never arrested for these crimes. However, on the 29th of July 1976, true terror would be unleashed on the streets of New York. Jody Valenti, who was 19, and her 18-year-old friend Donna Loria were chatting in a parked car in front of Donna's apartment in the Bronx. They did not realize that they were not alone until two shots ring out, Striking both, Donna's life was taken, whereas Jody survived. At the time, the police thought it was just a random shooting, so it didn't receive all that much attention. On the 23rd of October 1976, he stalked the streets of Queens, coming across a young couple, a 19-year-old named Carl Denaro and his friend Rosemary Keenan. He walked up, and without a moment hesitation, he fires, shooting Carl in the head which he miraculously survived. As did Rosemary, who was unhurt. On the 26th of November, 1976, he would strike again in Queens. 16-year-old Donna Damasi and 18-year-old Joanne Lomino were on their way home from the movies. He shot both of them. Donna would make a complete recovery, but Joanne would spend the rest of her life paralyzed. On the 30th of January, 1977, a young couple sat in their car, they were Christine Freund, whom was 26, and John Deal. They were engaged and had their whole future ahead of them, a future that, tragically, would never happen, thanks to a man with a gun. They were both shot, but only John would survive. 
It's at this point that the cops concluded that the weapon used was a 44 caliber Charter Arms Bulldog revolver. Furthermore, they now thought that the other shootings were connected. And, they believed that he was targeting women. Women with dark long hair, or, couples in cars. Could it be a case that his actual intended victims were the women, and all others were just in his way? Then, on the 8th of March, 1977, a 21 year old college student named Virginia Voskarichin was just walking down the street in Queens when a man walked out of the shadows and shot her, killing her instantly. The spent shell found at the scene was a match for the other murders. On the 10th of March, 1977, the police held a press conference where they said that the same weapon was used in all the shootings. And moreover, they claimed that he probably hated women thinking it was probably due to being rejected a lot. They also announced that they have formed a task force to deal with this monster, and the name of this task force was Operation Omega. Oh my God. It was a task force that would be made up of like 300 officers, and that was the best name you could come up with. It sounds like the name of a rejected Saturday morning cartoon. Anyway, as you can imagine, the news had a field day with these horrendous crimes. Reporting on every fact, and speculation alike. The police, much to their credit, conducted a huge investigation, following up on every lead and clue. Like the yellow Volkswagen that eyewitnesses have claimed to have seen at one of the murders. As well as tracking down the owners of 44 caliber bulldog revolvers, which numbered in the thousands. While I have your attention, please, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It'll really help our channel out. On the 16th of April, 1977, he stalked the streets of the Bronx. He found and murdered Alexander Esau, a 20-year-old, and Valentina Suriani, who was 18 years old. But this time he left more than victims and shell casings. They found a handwritten letter addressed to Captain Joe Borelli a member of Operation Omega. It was filled with spelling mistakes. But it also gave him a name, a name that would strike fear in the hearts of the citizens of New York. The son of Sam. Here is the letter, in all its disgusting glory, and I quote. I am deeply hurt by your calling me a women hater. I am not but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. I am a little brat. When Father Sam gets drunk he gets mean. He beats our family. Sometimes he ties me up to the back of the house. Other times he locks me in the garage. Sam loves to drink blood. Go out and kills, commands Father Sam. Behind our house some rest. Mostly young raped and slaughtered, their blood drained, just bones now. Pap Sam keeps me locked in the attic too. I can't get out but I look out the attic window and watch the world go by. I feel like an outsider. I am on a different wavelength than everybody else programmed to kill. However, to stop me you must kill me. Attention all police, shoot me first, shoot to kill or else keep out of my way or you will die. Papa Sam is old now. He needs some blood to preserve his youth. He has too many heart attacks. Ugh, me hoot, it hurts, sonny boy. I miss my pretty princess most of all. She's resting in our lady's house. But I'll see her soon. I am the monster, Beelzebub, the chubby behemoth. I love to hunt. Prowling the streets looking for fair game, tasty meat. The women of queens are prettiest of all. I must be the water they drink. I live for the hunt, my life. Blood for Papa. Mr. Borelli, sir, I don't want to kill anymore. No sir, no more but I must, honor thy father. I want to make love to the world. I love people. I don't belong on earth. Return me to yahoos. To the people of Queens, I love you. And I want to wish all of you a happy Easter. May God bless you in this life and in the next. And for now I say goodbye and good night. Police, let me haunt you with these words, I'll be back.
I'll be back. To be interpreted as bang, 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 ugh. Yours in murder, mister. Monster. Wow, that bloody dingo needs a checkup from the neck up. Anyway, on the 16th of April, 1977, a quiet night in Queens was shattered by gunshots. Sal Lupo and Judy Placido, both 17, were getting set to go home after an enjoyable evening at their local disco. They were sitting in the car when Judy turned to Sal and commented, this son of Sam is really scary the way that guy comes out of nowhere. You never know where he'll hit next. No sooner did she say that, then three shots rang out, hitting both, but they were not hurt bad. The gunman ran off into the night, while Sal ran to get Judy some help. The police released several sketches of the gunman, based on eyewitness testimony including survivors of his attacks. But there was a problem. Most of the sketches didn't really look like the same person, I mean one might look a bit like Berkowitz, but the others didn't. However, at this time at least, the cops still claimed that it was a lone gunman doing the shootings. Then, on the 30th of May, 1977, Jimmy Breslin, a renowned writer for the New York Times, received a handwritten letter believed to be from the killer. He claimed to be a big fan of Mr. Breslin, and was curious to know if he was planning any big article for the July 29th paper, on account that that was the one-year anniversary of his first killing. This is part of his letter, and I quote, Hello from the gutters of NYC which are filled with dog manure, vomit, stale wine, urine and blood. Hello from the sewers of NYC, which swallow up these delicacies when they are washed away by the sweeper trucks. Hello from the cracks in the sidewalks of NYC, and from the ants that dwell in these cracks and feed in the dried blood of the dead that is settled into the cracks. His first anniversary. Maybe he wanted the cops to bake him a bloody cake or something. Anyway. Breslin, to his credit, tried to convince the shooter to turn himself into the cops. But his little pen pal totally blew off that idea, and struck again on the 30th of July. 1977. Because it was around the one-year anniversary of the murder's first killing, the cops set up a huge dragnet, concentrating on the Bronx and Queens, and that might have worked, if that's where he was. He instead hit a couple, in a parked car in Brooklyn. They were Stacy Moskowitz and Robert Violanta, both were 20 years of age. Both shot in the head. Stacy passed away, and Robert lived, but was blinded. What the murderer did not realize is that they would be his last victims. Did he get caught in the act? No. Did he get caught by the police as he tried to escape? No. In the end he was caught by the Almighty, the All-Powerful. Parking ticket. He seemed to get a bit careless with where he parked his car, a yellow Ford Galaxy. And he parked it next to a hydrant. A local resident witnessed him remove the ticket from his windshield just after the attack. And who did the police trace the ticket back to? David Richard Berkowitz. The cops moved as quickly as they could. Heading to Berkowitz's apartment in Yonkers. When they arrived at his place, on the 10th of August, 1977, they decided to check the car, a Ford Galaxy, not a Volkswagen, like earlier reported. Before arresting Berkowitz. Upon searching the car, they found a rifle, a 44 caliber bulldog pistol, as well as maps of the crime scenes, and an undelivered letter to Sergeant Dowd. When he came out a few hours later, the cops nabbed him. Upon his arrest, he was quoted as saying, what took you so long? When the cops checked out his apartment, the walls were filled with occult images. They also found his diary. In his own book of the damned, he took credit for multiple fires in New York. At first, the cops were concerned that their search of his car may be considered inadmissible in a court of law, because they sorta of didn't have a warrant to check the car. But, luckily, Berkowitz confessed to his crimes right off the bat. During the question, he told an incredibly odd story. 
He claimed that he was given his marching orders by a dog named Harvey. The dog was owned by his ex-neighbor, Sam, which he claimed was the Sam in the whole son of Sam thing. As for Harvey, he, according to Berkowitz, was not just any normal dog, oh no. Good old Harvey was a dog possessed by a demon, and this demon ordered him to kill. So, let that be a lesson to you, if a dog starts talking to you, and orders you to do horrible things, just ignore it. Anyway, he claimed that he even tried to shoot the dog, but Harvey used his magical powers to screw up his aim. As for the trial, he made a deal, he said that he would plead guilty to everything provided the death penalty would be taken off the table, so that he'd only get life. While being sentenced, his strange behavior would continue to outrage the courtroom on lookers. But if it was an attempt to get him off by reason of insanity it didn't work. On the 12th of June, 1978, he received six life sentences for a total of 365 years. He also claimed that he was motivated to kill by the hall and oats song Rich Girl. Now, I know this song, in fact during my research for this video I listened to it again just to confirm something. And what did I confirm? I have no idea what the bloody hell this wanker is talking about. While in prison, he said that, at the time of the murders, he was a devil worshipper and a member of a murder cult. And that, in fact, he wasn't even the shooter, he was just a lookout. And that they were responsible for multiple murders coast to coast, but, of course, he couldn't say much about them, after all, he didn't want to endanger his family. But he did insist that he did not act alone. The thing is, even from the beginning, there were some that thought there were more than just one killer. Which, I must admit, would explain the different descriptions. He now claims to be a born-again Christian and plays a big role in the prison ministry and counsels other inmates. He has even asked the governor of New York to cancel some of his parole hearings because, and I quote, I can give you no good reason why I should even be considered. Now, I can understand the whole born-again Christian thing, but I'm sorry, it may cleanse your soul, but it will never wash the blood from your hands. And I think that is where we'll end our video today. But tell me what you think in the comments. Was he just a lone mad dog killer, or was he a mere cog in some murderous machine? What is your opinion? We here at Straight Arrow want to extend our sorrow and prayers for the families of the victims of David Berkowitz. He either alone, or as a group, took six souls from this world, he is where he belongs, and where he should be for all time, never again to breathe a breath of free air. Thank you for watching, don't forget to hit that like button and remember to smash subscribe. And as always if you want to, you can leave a comment. Or tell us if there is anyone you want us to cover, then, by all means, let us know. And remember, evil has no race, gender, or age.